there, I'm Shannon, and today's video is a literal trip, okay? A few things to get out of the way. Number one, yes, my hair is blonde. It's probably gonna stay this way for a while. Number two, the title is not clickbait or a typo, unfortunately. And number three, please, please, please do not recreate or attempt to recreate anything that I talk about in this video. Thank you and have a good day. I've been really hesitant on telling this story, but a lot of you guys forever have been begging me to do story times about my My Digital Escape slash MDE experience. And I feel like this is a good place to start because A, it's insane, and B, it really only has to do with me. And um, I think I'd just be more comfortable just talking about myself for obvious reasons. There's a lot of obvious cons to telling this story to the entire world on the internet, but I also feel like there's a lot of pros. <laughs> for example, I've been alluding to in the past couple videos that I put out some major changes that I made in my life and my personality and my lifestyle and everything. And I feel like this story is the turning point of one of the most pertinent changes in my entire life. Um, so I'd like to share that with you guys. Not only is it an important story, it's also hilarious and it combines my two favorite things, which is spirituality and being emo. So with that being said, let's jump right into this. Setting the stage, we're in Los Angeles circa 2015, 2016, 2017. I don't remember years very well, whichever one I say, it's gonna be wrong. Let's say 2016, that's my guess. This is right before the very fabled MDE or My Digital Escape US and Canada tour that we did. Tensions were fucking at an all time high in the MDE house. It was seven out of seven week and problems were just beginning. Everyone's aware of the drama that My Digital Escape had with Brian Stars. And if you're not, Brian Stars was my manager slash the manager of the YouTube group My Digital Escape and one of the co-founders. Not a very nice guy, if I do say so myself. A lot of crazy shit went down with that, but that's not what this video is about. If you want to hear about that, there's already several examples on the internet. Go, my children, be free and find your Brian Stars content. This is not that. This is weirder. <laughs> Me and Brian stars, y'all know we butted heads and from the very beginning we were butting heads in this tiny little LA apartment. There were decisions on the tour that we couldn't agree on, there were decisions on the channel we couldn't agree on, financial decisions, just everything was a fucking fight. Tension was so, so, so high you could have cut it with a knife and then we all would have cut each other into a million pieces. <laughs> Shortly before this, probably a few years before this, cannabis had just become recreationally legal for people over 21 in California. And oh my god, did I need a smoke being around this. Not only was there a lot of changes in my career and MDE and everything happening, I was also changing a lot of medications um, that I was on for my bipolar disorder. And around this time, I was really heavily making the transition from pharmaceuticals, prescribed obviously par pharmaceuticals, to more natural solutions such as cannabis, good old Mary Jane. However, you had to be 21 to recreationally purchase marijuana and I, was not of that age. Regardless, I needed something to take the edge off. I was losing my goddamn mind, okay? I mean, I was living with Brian Stars for multiple, multiple weeks. I feel like I don't really have to delve deeper into <laughs> explaining myself there. Like I said, I could not go into an actual dispensary because I was 18. However, I could go into a good old smoke shop or a head shop or whatever you want to call it. CBD was also like really on the rise at this time and they were starting to sell CBD more commonly in stores. So that's what I was kind of hoping to get my hands on when I went in to one of these head shops in LA. Fortunately and more... Unfortunate, I guess not either, not to either side of fortune, but I happened upon not CBD, not good old Mary Jane, but something called salvia. For the second time, I would like to reiterate, do not do salvia, okay? Just listen to me, trust me. If you've ever trusted me on anything, trust me on this, just don't do it. However, at the time I was 18 and uh, pulled out my big brain energy and I decided, well, 
I can't find CBD. I can't legally buy weed. So this is legal. I can buy this at a smoke shop on the street with my credit card. This has to be safe or similar in some way. At, at least safe. It's legal, you know. Government's not gonna steer me that wrong, right? Ah, to be young again. As you get older, you learn all the things that the government lets you put in your body are actually way worse for you than the things you're not allowed to put in your body. And it doesn't make any sense, but that's where we are as a society. So I do the dirty deed. I pick the middle strength one because, you know, I'm not going to be a baby about it. I'm not going to get the weakest, but I'm also going to be cautious because, you know, big brain energy. Let's pick the middle strength which is what I did. So it is literally pre-packaged, like I said. I do the dirty deed, buy it with my credit card from just a regular old shop, and I bring it back to Brian Starr's apartment. Brian Starr's? -es? Brian Starr's? -es? Brian Starr, I really do not know the correct conjugation of that, but Brian Starr's apartment. We are there and we have this substance. Now this, <laughs> this is where it gets real. So we are all sitting in a room in a circle, in a big circle. Everybody's there, lots of friends, all hanging out. Lots of friends in Brian Stars as well. We're sitting in this big circle, and I, I'd just like to say most people did not partake. I was one of the few that did, um, and I probably partook the most out of anybody. I'm not gonna say names, because like I said, I'm not trying to talk about other people, we're just focusing on myself and my brilliance today. However, in the moment of this decision, I was not going to be the first to take it. I read up on it a ton. I read every experience. I watched videos of other people taking it. I did the works. I wanted to make sure I knew what I was doing or at the very least that I couldn't overdose or actually physically injure myself and I couldn't. So <laughs> yay, I guess. Even still, your girl was not going to be the first one to puff. So I wasn't. We packed a little bowl as you do when you're smoking something and everybody takes a hit and it comes to me and I also take a hit. And before I know it, everybody is laughing hysterically, like hysterically laughing. Granted, this is also something that can happen when you smoke weed, but when you smoke weed and you laugh, it's because things are actually funny. You're like in an, a real euphoric state. And with this, it was like, I was this empty, emotionless shell of a person laughing at nothing and I couldn't stop. I couldn't figure it out. It was just like, ha ha ha, what's going on guys? Ha ha ha, why can't I stop? I cannot control this, ha ha ha. Not fun at all. However, big brain energy, everyone who's going on with this decides to take another hit. Again, this shit is literally, legitimately just a dried strain of sage. So I'm thinking, again, like, you know, what more can this do? Let's let let's push the boundaries, the human experience, the boundaries of the human experience. Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> should not have done that. I shouldn't have said that. I should not have said that. Everybody else takes their second hit and they start saying stuff like they are seeing cows flying around the room and that the colors are changing and turning into strobe lights and flipping around and they're just seeing this incredible display and I'm not seeing any of that. At this point in time, the only thing that I'm feeling is this really odd sensation of being pushed, like physically, over and over. In fact, I, I actually asked everyone around me, like, am I rocking back and forth like this? Because it sure as hell felt like I was, but I wasn't. So at this point, I am laughing hysterically. I feel like I am being pushed by a ghost or the universe or some unforeseen force. But still, I decide to keep going third hit, everyone is still having a grand old time, seeing cows, flashing lights, having a disco in their head. But not I. As I'm waiting to join all my friends on this super awesome psychedelic plane of existence, I look down and I no longer have any legs. What? What are you saying, might you ask, Shannon? No legs. Yes, okay, I have legs. They're here. They're still attached, but at this very moment, I could have sworn to you my legs were gone. Not only were they gone, they had melted <laughs> into the bed I was sitting on. Consciousness-wise, I'm fully there at this point. However, physically, like what I am seeing visually, it was almost like my very existence, the fiber of my being, starting with my legs, was unraveling into individual DNA strands. 
and so was everything else around me. Before I knew it, I was literally interwoven with the comforter I was sitting on. I had become a fucking bed sheet. There was literally no distinguishing where that bed sheet ended and where my body began at that point in time and it was fucking terrifying. Slowly everything around me began to break down into its like molecular level. Everything sort of just merged into this one one dimension, maybe maybe two dimension is the right word. This flat existence, this flat surface of individual existence and I was no more. I know it doesn't make any sense but my cognitive experience versus reality was so vastly different at this point. I lost track of space, time, and at this point I was actually losing track of my consciousness. This is when things started getting scary. Because I couldn't physically define the end of my body, my thoughts were now outside of me. It was almost as if my thoughts were around me and taking on some sort of part in this physical one or two dimensional world and before I know it, while I was thinking about it, as I was thinking about how scary it was to have my thoughts on the outside of my body, I could not remember what a thought was. The same thing that just happened to my body and my surroundings of falling apart was now happening to my psychology and my consciousness and everything literally just disintegrated. I was nothing and I was everything all at once in a way that I can't put into English words. The only thing I could feel or make out in any individual capacity at this point was panic. The fact that I had no control over anything and somehow, some way, inside of me, my very last conscious thought, I was able to make it to tell myself to just relax. I don't know what actually flipped inside my mind or what I did physically with my body at that point, but everything turned to this pure white light, one solid white existence, and it was just absolute bliss for what felt like minutes, hours, I literally do not know. In reality, this lasted all of I want to say 45 50 seconds and at the end of this 45 50 seconds the first thing i remember is thinking to myself what the fuck is that i was looking i finally was regaining my humanness my human senses i could see and i could feel and i was becoming an individual again and i was looking across the room and i just saw this weird yellowy like sponge Thing. And I was like, what is that? And then I realized that's a person. That's a human being. That's Brian Stars. Okay, that's Brian Stars. When I came to, I was freaked the fuck out again. The bliss was gone. I was just fucking confused. I was trying to reorient myself and figure out who Brian was, what the hell I was doing here. How did I get in this apartment? It all slowly came back and I started to calm down, but I did not know what to make of this. I literally had not a clue what just happened. When I came to, I had drooled all over myself. More drool than I knew even was in my body was on my shirt. And apparently for that 45 seconds, I was screaming at everyone in the room while holding a pipe. Did I smoke something? Did I smoke something? Like I said, big brain energy was in the room with us that day. Now, time passes. Much, mucho time passes. In fact, months pass, and I kind of just put this experience on the back burner because what the fuck? While everyone else was seeing flying cows, I was literally drooling on myself, half conscious, and losing connection with my physical body. I thought I was literally insane, so I kept that one to myself, and like I said, didn't talk about it for months, until Warp Tour, two years ago. Dun, dun, dun. So actually, it wasn't months, it was two years that passed with this experience in the back burner of my mind not telling people because I was genuinely disconcerted at the experience. No one else had experienced that, and I didn't know what that was and I was not about to talk about it. 
So two years pass, actually two years, not several months, two years pass with this in the back burner of my mind. And I'm sitting on a bus at Warp Tour with two of some really cool YouTubers slash musicians slash friends of mine, Dakota Wintz and Andrew Bizanti, which you guys probably know. And Andrew asks this philosophical question kind of out of nowhere. I don't remember what we were talking about, but he does this with his hand. And he says, obviously this is nothing in my hands, but it can't be nothing. It has to be something. Like, what is this something nothing? This actually struck me. This question struck me on a deeper level, and I went into the story of when I smoked the salvia at Brian Stars' apartment, and everything became this nothing. There was no separation from the nothingness in my hands and my hands, if that makes any sense. Like I said, in English, there's literally no good way to describe this, but this is the conversation we were having, the discussion of the nothingness, the somethingness of nothingness, if that makes any sense. To me, these two things just seemed really similar. The lack of individualness that I experienced when taking that drug, and the idea that there can't be nothing in nothing. I went on this tangent and I started telling Andrew all about this experience I had and you know what happened when I took this third hit and all of a sudden Dakota across the bus starts freaking out. He's in a conversation with someone else and he just barely hears what I'm talking about and he jumps out of that conversation, comes across the bus and is like, do you know what you're saying? And I was like, no, <laughs> I'm really like, no. And he looks at me dead in the eyes, so excited because he is such a super cool person. And he was like, you're describing what I call and what a lot of people call an ego death. In his own words, he explained exactly what I had experienced on Salvia and how your perception of individuality is exactly that, just a perception. The coolest way it was ever put to me was that our existence is the space between the molecules that we occupy rather than the molecules themselves. When you think of it that way, there literally is no physical separation between me and the air, or me and my backdrop, or me and the camera, or me and you if we're touching. He introduced me to some of these spiritual gurus that he'd followed for a while, some books that really helped him out. I read them all, I scoured the fucking internet for everything I could find about ego deaths, and suddenly, that drug experience was ultimately clear to me. That white light, that one existence of nothingness and everythingness, was what I, to this day, consider God. The oneness with the universe, the unity within everything, between people, between animals, between consciousnesses, is my conception of God, if that makes any sense. To me, there is no person or man in the sky that is God. It is simply the connectedness and the oneness, the existence of everything on one spiritual plane. No other experience has ever made me feel so insignificant and so significant all at the same time, and nothing like this has ever flipped my perspective in such a vast way. I have been a staunch atheist my whole life until this moment. Honestly, until after this moment. Until I had it explained to me and broken down and my brain was able to click that information into place, I didn't... There was no God in my life. There was no anything, no spirituality like that in my life. I know that this is probably not where any of you guys thought this was where the story was going to go at all. We went from Brian Stars and drug trips to literally finding God. And that sounds like a Hey There I'm Shannon video! <laughs> now, like I said at the beginning of this video and in the middle, and I'm gonna say it one more time, you should not be trying this to try to recreate this experience or this realization because it's just A, it's not gonna work that way, and B, it wasn't fun. Like, 
the story is fun and the retrospect is fun but there are other less jarring and less horrible ways that you can come to this level of self-acceptance and awareness. Meditation. Since this experience, the closest that I have gotten to other ego deaths is through meditation, through reading spiritual books, through all that jazz. Yeah. <laughs> there is literally no reason that you need drugs or should ever take salvia to recreate this experience, like I said, but it is one I really wanted to share with you because I feel like it's unique. I feel like it is a massive shift in who I am and I think it can maybe help someone. I hope. I really appreciate you guys watching this fucking weird, wild, wacky story that um, I haven't done one of these in forever and this is definitely a wild one to come back with. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and turn on that notification bell. I literally have no idea how this video is going to be received in the slightest, but if you're interested in me talking more about spirituality or mental health related to spirituality or anything like that, please comment below. I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video, which should hopefully be pretty soon. I love you guys a ton and I will see you soon. Bye!